Profit targets can be a great way to scale out of a trade while securing profit along the way. This video is going to be very similar to our last stop and trail stop videos where we go over the predator's order management. In this video, we're going to focus mainly on the predator mode and we will also show examples of each profit target and what it does. And as well, we're going to share some bonus tips that are going to help you make the most out of your orders. And for those of you new here, the Predator X is an order entry and management system that lets users create their own fully or semi-automated strategies with a bunch of different customizable features. There's a full user guide on our website at tradesaber.com and we also have a free trial so you can check it out and that's going to be on our Discord. All links for everything are going to be down below. But with that, let's get started. All right, to get started, we're heading down to our 04 order management section. And like I mentioned in the intro, we are dealing with predator mode today. The predator does allow us to use our own ATMs if we choose, but that's going to be another video on its own. In order to keep this video as short as possible, we're just sticking to predator. And what we're going to focus with today, those are our targets down here. Now, just to give a quick overview of how these targets work, when it comes to the Predator, we have up to four different targets. You can enable just one, or you can enable all four, or anything in between. The choice is completely up to you. You just have to select that little checkbox, and it will automatically populate your customizable options. Now, when it comes to Ninja Trader, each target is considered a separate order, meaning whatever target you select, you have to select the specific quantity for that profit target. So for an example, let's say we want to enter 10 contracts. Instead of putting 10 contracts as your only quantity, you would instead have to split that 10 into however many targets you have. So split it between one, two, three, four, or however many targets you're using. So instead of just doing that whole 10 contracts, we're going to be splitting it into each separate target. So just for simplicity, our first target, let's say we just want one. Our second target, we're going to do two. Third target, we're doing three contracts. And then for our fourth target, we're going to do the remainder at four. So when we add all of these up, this should give us 10 contracts altogether. So just to see how it looks once we actually submit the trade. So here on our chart, I'm just gonna enter a trade. All right, so once we take a trade, we're going to see our four different targets. So here you see target one at 25 ticks and we have a position size of one. You see our target two with a position size of two and it's at 50 ticks. Then we go 100 ticks for target number three. That one has three contracts. That's this one up here. And lastly, our final target down here at 200 ticks that has a quantity of four and that one is up here. So that's the only thing to keep in mind. Any target that you select has to have its own individual quantity. And of course, you don't have to go into the properties again in order to customize these orders. You can go right into our chart trader panel and change these to whatever you want. So let's say we just want two targets. So one, two, and we wanna split three and let's do two. When we enter, it's just going to split it into however many targets you select and the quantity you select for that specific target. And as another quick little tip, a question that comes up quite a bit is how to set a runner. So let's say you want to hit only one profit target and you want to leave a second one with no profit target so you can just keep trailing, but you still want that position size to be there. So I'm just going to show a quick example here. I'm just going to set a quick trail just so we get a visual. And in order to execute this specific position size, but you don't want an actual profit target, you just want to keep going until you get stopped out, you can just go down to your dropdown list and select no profit. So now when we enter long, you're going to see we have the same position size of five, that is three plus two or whatever number you selected, but we're not going to have an actual profit target. So now if we play it, and we start trailing, picked the wrong one. It's just going to keep going until we actually get stopped out. So I think that just about covers all the tips related to the profit targets. Now, I just wanna show examples of each one just so we know how they're supposed to look on our chart. All right, for our first option, we're starting off with ticks and this is exactly like we just showed in the previous example. 
when we enter a trade is just going to set your profit target that many ticks away from the entry price. So here we have 25 ticks, 50 ticks, and 100 ticks. So if we look at our entry price, 21,991 and 50 cents. 25 ticks, that would be 6.25, perfect. 50 ticks, 12.5, and then 100 ticks, that is 25. This is probably the most common way to set a profit target. This is likely what most of you guys are using, especially if you're new to the Predator and have just been using ATMs before. A tick-based profit target, very standard on IndiaTrader. But now let's move on to our next profit target. We're going to switch to the RR, or risk to reward. A risk to reward profit target is going to help you maintain a consistent distance for every single trade. The way the risk to reward works is it's going to take the distance between your entry and your stop loss, and then it's just going to multiply it by whatever number we set here. So for an example, a value of one, that is a one-to-one -one risk to reward, meaning whatever distance that you're willing to lose, that's going to get added as a profit target. A value of two, that's a two to one. Value of three, three to one. And of course, you can do decimals, you don't have to do full numbers. So I'm just going to change that as an example. Now, these profit targets are very popular when it comes to users using some sort of a stop loss where it's going to change on every single trade. So something like the high-low, where it sets your stop at either the high when you're going short or the low when you're going long. Every single trade is likely going to be a different distance. So the risk to reward profit targets are automatically going to calculate that distance and set your profit target based on that level. So I'm just going to run it to show a quick example here. So here we entered a trade. We have our stop set at the low of the previous candle. And if we just take our Fibonacci tool here and match it up, we're going to see that it's the same distance between your entry and your stop that gets added as your profit target. That is a one-to-one -one risk to reward. And then if you look up here at negative 200, that is this same distance just multiplied by two. That is your two-to-one risk to reward. And then the 2.5, that is halfway between your negative 200, negative 300. Again, it's just this distance multiplied by two and a half. And these profit targets are also often combined with an auto position size where it's just going to calculate your position size for you based on the same distance between the entry and the stop. So all of these combined will usually give you a consistent risk to reward on every single trade, regardless of where your stop is going to be set. But again, that's just one way to use it. I'm just trying to show different examples so you guys can customize to your own needs. All right, for our next example, we are switching over to ATR. And this is actually my favorite way of setting profit targets because they're going to dynamically adjust based on the current market conditions. So let me show you how these work. For this example, I'm going to load the ATR indicator. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing this as a visual so you guys can see exactly how these work. So just loading that on the chart. Now, the ATR profit targets are going to be based on this ATR indicator. And all it's doing is it's taking the most recent value at the time of your entry, and it's going to multiply that value by whatever number you set in here. Now, the reason ATR is so popular is because they adjust based on the current market. If the market is currently slow, the bar sizes are smaller, it, you're not getting a lot of movement, the ATR is going to shrink. But as we scroll back a little bit, we're going to see during some market movements where you get a lot of volatility and the bar sizes are getting much bigger, then your ATR is also going to have a much bigger value. These ATR profit targets are going to adjust, they're going to get bigger, they're going to get smaller, all based on the current market conditions. So just to show a quick example, I'm going to change this to a value of one. So we get a one to one, and then I'm going to enter a trade. All right, so here we have our ATR profit targets, and our first one is set to one ATR. So that is the most current ATR value. And just to show you the math so we can see exactly what we're working with, we're going to do our first profit target up here, 21,997 minus 21,991.75. And that is a value of 525. 
and we have 569 that is actually let me change this because we have it on bar close so change that to on price change and we have the most current ATR value, 5.32. Well, this is going to automatically adjust to that nearest tick. So we have that 5.25 value. So that is where this first profit target gets set. And then our second profit target, it's just this value multiplied by 2.1. So again, 5.32 multiplied 2.1. So we get this value and then we just add it to our entry price. So 21. 991.75 plus 11.172 we get 22,002.92 or it's just going to round it to I guess 0.75 here so that's all it is it's just going to multiply whatever your current ATR value is it's going to multiply it by whatever number you set in here and like I mentioned before as your ATR is going up and down it's going to adjust those profit targets as well based on the current market conditions. All right, last but not least, we are switching over to our percent based profit target. And if you've used this option with NinjaTrader's own ATMs, this is going to be basically the same thing where we take the most current price and base our profit target on a percentage of that current price. So let me switch these over, percent and going to switch this back to custom now like always I'm going to enter a trade so we can see exactly where these get set and these might actually be a little too far away but that's okay you guys can adjust these to whatever suits your needs so all we're doing let's bring out our trusty calculator and let's look at the most current price that is 21991.5 and for our first profit target set at 0.2 this is 0.2 of 1% so the math would look something like times 0.002 because we're looking at less than one full percent once we get the calculation 43 let's call it 44 and if we look at our entry 21991.5 plus 0.2% that is the 44, that all looks just about right. And if we were to do the same for our second profit target, that is 0 0.005, that gets set at 110 away. Again, that looks spot on. When it comes to the percentage, it's just a percentage of the total current price. And as the current price moves up and down, so are these profit targets when they're initially set. And then all that remains is our no profit. And we already went through these at the beginning with our tips. And just as a quick recap, these are used to submit the actual quantity for that target, but have it set so there's no actual profit target in case you want to trail your stop up. But that just about covers everything when it comes to profit targets using the Predator X. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Let me know on Discord, but I'm going to cut the video here. I hope you found something useful. As always, take care. Enjoy.